Hey everyone. Welcome to the virtual summit, the Winer Wellness Week. Joe's got his coffee. He's ready. He's got his espresso. Yeah, my espresso. I got a I got a lymphocino going on today, Candace. Cheers, Joe. Cheers. <laughs> we got some coffee talk, it looks like. Joe's got a great presentation for us today. He is going to go over breaking news and nutrition. Always breaking news, always the uh, most up to date information you can find. Uh, it's the two-step process to optimal health. And I was just talking about this with Dr. Honigman. I said, you make it sound so easy. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, you know, there's a lot of subdivisions under those two-step process. No, not really, actually. You know, and this is a good one for today because, um, it, it, you know, Dr. H, Dr. Uh, Orbach, two of the best chiropractors in town. And I, I, you know, Dr. Orbach, I go to him. I have nutrition discussions all the time with Dr. H. But you know what they don't do? You know what they don't do on their workshops is talk enough about what they do. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about chiropractic. So yeah. I'm going to give them a little uh, plug today because, <laughs> yeah, because they need, they, they need to, uh, this needs to get out there for them, Candace, because the what they do you know and we i know for our workshops we always look for various topics bring something new to the table but you know let's get a little bit back to basics here and on this one now part of this two start two step process is simple because everybody can do it without a lot of effort everybody has it available to them without a lot of effort and I think that, you know, once we see what it is and why and how they go together so well, that's the most important part. So the two-step process, well, it involves basically, well, you know what, before we go into that, let's find out why we need this two-step process. You know, I heard you talking to Dr. H, you know, about we always, we, we, have, to, we have to enlighten everybody as to how sick we are first mm -hmm. yeah. before we can give them solutions. Yeah. Because, you know, Candace, a lot of people out there don't realize they're sick. Yeah, that's true. They think, they think it's normal, yeah. right? And one thing we were talking about, you know, they were talking about the side effects and the issues with medication and the nutrients that they deplete. You know, Joe, we always look at each other when we're talking about this because we know um, one thing that people forget is a medication, you know, birth control. How many girls yes. are on birth control and how many of them don't even consider that a medication? Yes. Um, and, and people who think about that, they don't categorize that as a medication. They don't think of it that way. It's a prescription drug. It has side yes, effects. Yes, it is. Yes, it so, does. So, you know, that, that's Diverse the things that they, that's what we're talking about when people are like, what do you mean we don't realize how sick we are? You don't know, like you just don't uh, think about it in the big picture. You don't realize you're taking medications when you shouldn't be or we you know, throw out these statistics, the average medications that, you know, we don't normally talk about people in their 20s, but, um, you know, if, if that were to be the topic, they would think like, how are so many people in their 20s on medications? Well, that's one of them that we didn't even think about. Exactly. And uh, that starts the ball rolling. And like you said, it has effects, it has adverse effects. You know, we've been saying for years that side effects as a marketing term doesn't really exist. It's uh, tried. It, it's there to minimize mm -hmm. these adverse effects of putting these synthetic chemicals in our bodies. Um, <clears throat> so you know, I, I one of the doctors that I follow a lot is, and I heard you say earlier that I I borrow readily from the yeah. experts, and I do because <laughs> that's who we need to listen to. And I can listen to some of these experts more than ever, all of our listeners can. So. I need to bring that information to them. And one of them we, is we Dr. We appreciate that. <laughs> yes, you're very welcome. But one of them is Dr. John Bergman. And uh, I, I found Dr. Bergman about six months ago, eight, I don't know, eight months ago. Actually, I found him right around the start, right before maybe the start of this thing out there that shall not be named. But, um, you know, I've been, been, he's done amazing lectures. And uh, look, he's on, he's on YouTube. Anybody can go out and find him. Of course, they are censoring mm -hmm. him now. Uh, so you have to be a little bit more creative, but if we can go to, here's some statistics that I got from Dr. Bergman. If we can go to the slide, the health of the American people. Yeah. Let's share your PowerPoint here. 
I'll take it from the beginning. Here we go. There we go. These are some alarming statistics. Some of them I agree with, some of them I think are even low. Um, the whole issue with cancer, you know, 30 years ago, whatever, 40 years ago, one in 20, one in 30 people. I heard Charlene uh, Bollinger say that the other day or uh, yesterday. And now it's, she said one in three, Dr. Bergman says one in two um, will get some form of cancer in their lifetime. That's just not acceptable. Now we're in October. And of course, we're in Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And, you know, uh, we've been screaming from the rooftops about this. We don't, uh, I'm of the opinion, and many of the people that I associate with, experts in our industry, don't think that they've done a, a, a thing to help with breast cancer. The cases are still going up. The deaths are still going up every year. And you know now it's gotten to the point where it's a it's a risk factor for men, breast cancer. So it's just out of control. With, uh, and you have, you have the the alternative side. You have prostate for men, uh, out of control, and then all the other cancers, of course. But you know I we and we heard Tracy and and Charlene Charlene Bollinger talk about oxygen and the fact that how did we know in 1932 that the cause of cancer was oxygen deprivation. And yet today we have more cancer than ever. When we already uncovered the cause, there's a question. And I would love somebody to answer that question. But right uh, so far, I haven't gotten anybody that could answer it satisfactory enough for me. But that's just one disorder, still one of the worst things and one of the most uh, populous things that we have as far as uh, conditions in this country. One in five will have an autoimmune disorder. Well, that's probably going to go up after this whole episode of what we've had over the last six to eight months. And, you know, Dr. Weiner, Candace, was one of those guys that said he didn't believe in that term, autoimmune disorder. He said, your body is not going to just out of nowhere attack itself. I can hear, I can still hear him say that. He's I saying, and what, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and, and he was spot he was, on. He was, because what he was, what he was trying to get across to everybody was that, and now this is coming out too, that our body has this innate ability to deal with things and, and, and cause the heat and start the healing process. And, you know, we've heard the term exosome a lot lately. Okay. In regard to what's going on with viruses and bacteria. And, and these are the ways the body treats foreign invaders. So if someone has an autoimmune disorder, it's because something invaded their body and their body is saying, I gotta do something about this. Anyway, heart disease, one in four of all deaths in this country, still heart disease, unacceptable. Liver disease. Now, when you talk about liver disease, Candace, Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is the one that's causing this to be on the rise. And that comes from our diet. Jeff has talked ad nauseum about that, Jeff Nisnik. And uh, if you haven't seen his presentation on that, you really should look it up. It's probably on their, on their Facebook page. You just gotta scroll and find it. Now, this, this, this statistic on depression, I'm sorry, but that's too low. <laughs> I, I, it's way over one in 20, especially now. Uh, we're, and it's not funny, but the thing is, people don't understand that, you know, we've done all these things, this social distancing and masking and all these things that are meaningless and worthless, in my opinion. But what's happening is people are getting depressed more than ever. You know, Dr. Uh, Valerie Donaldson said to me a year ago or two years ago, she said, that the next big uh, epidemic, not you know, thinking about this, but she was talking about the opioid epidemic. She said the next big one's gonna be antidepressants because that's how bad it is and that's how over prescribed they are like Dr. H was talking about. Dementia, okay, let's just, let's just say all neurological conditions, right? You have Parkinson's, you have dementia, you have Alzheimer's. 
and we talk about what is it that's causing this. We've talked about the myelin sheath that covers the brain and the central nervous system. And that needs to be fortified and reinforced with the proper nutrients. It's not happening. Instead, it's being attacked on a regular basis because the average person uh, 60 years and older in this country right now is on about 12 different medications. And those medications all have adverse effects. And you know what, Candace? We talk about testing. We talked, you and I talked about the, the, the worthlessness of the PCR test the other day. But even when drug companies do their, you know, double blind placebo controlled tests on a new drug and they say it's safe, what they don't ever do is test it against other drugs. So the compounding effect is what's having the biggest impact on our health. Maybe this one drug isn't gonna kill you, but when you combine it with five, four, four, five, six, seven others, nobody has ever studied what that can do to a person. So we have a problem there. Thyroid, out of control. Why? Iodine deficiencies all over the place. Diabetics, out of control. 40%, almost half, of the population, type two diabetes is a lifestyle caused, lifestyle treated disorder. Chronic digestive disorder, 70, three fourths of the population. Well, there you have it. It all starts in the gut. It all starts with what you put in your mouth. Everything on top of that last bullet point is effective in a, affected in a large degree by digestion and food. So we can see where we have the, the problems in this country. Now, Dr. Bergman, he, he likes to stir things up like me and he, he you can go to the next slide. He likes to ask like these fun questions and they're all usually rhetorical, okay? <laughs> Why are we sick? Well, we know now why we're sick. It all starts with diet and lifestyle and drugs. Diet, lifestyle, drugs, that's it. So he says, do we need more medications? Because they'll tell you that. What did Dr. Weiner always say? That the medical community, modern medicine feels we don't have enough medications and we have too many body parts. How many times did he say that? They want to give us either another drug or take something out. Well, I say no. Do we need more vaccinations? Wow, what a, what a pertinent question that is right now. Because you know they're working on one and I know I'm not getting it. And I, you know, right back to Dr. Weiner, the surgeries, how many are unnecessary? Because, and Tracy talked about this earlier in the week. And you know, it's funny, all these workshops, they compound and they, we build off of each other because you know, the trauma care, is what modern medicine was built around. And she talks about that all the time. Trauma care. The only surgeries that are 100% necessary are when you need to put a body back together. And they are miracle workers when they do that. Unfortunately, there's too many unnecessary ones. And, and why would we even have a term elective surgery? <laughs> okay, we're, we get to choose. What surgeries we have? Okay, well, maybe in some cases we know our bodies better, but I don't think that's why that was invented. You know, and I don't really think we're defective either. I think our bodies are not defective. I think they're amazing machines and all they require is the proper fuel. And um, I mean, doc, Dr. Bergman goes into this, you know, uh, a lot. Uh, but he stated something that I had never heard anyone else say. And, and he said that, you know, all of these guys in modern medicine, they mean they follow their, their, their uh, education. They follow the uh, uh, protocols that they've been taught. And he said, they're all in for a rude awakening when this new paradigm, this new paradigm of health being the foundation of the body being the foundation of healing, not us, not a surgeon, not a doctor. Nobody heals anything. The body 
heals. But this new paradigm, when health is the natural, it is the natural state of the body. Sickness is not. But they're going to find themselves, I think, in a bad place if they don't embrace functional medicine as part of their practice. We're going to be, they're going to get lost in the shuffle. You know, and Dr. H talked about functional medicine and functional nutrition. That's a fairly new term. But let's think about what that actually means. Functional nutrition means that you intake nutrients that either improve or maintain or provide optimal functional conditions of the body. So do we diagnose, treat, cure anything? No, never did, never will. The body will, but in order for that to happen, you have to feed it the nutrients that it needs, that it requires. So what is this? Oh, let's this go to a couple slides over where the best kept secret. Let's go to that one. I just want that on the screen. I want everybody to see that. This is great. The best kept secret of medicine is that the body heals itself if we create the right conditions and stop. See, there's always the second part. Stop doing the things that cause the sickness in the first place, which are bad food, bad drugs, bad habits. You know, it's funny. I can think back and like Dr. H made the comment about him and Jamie and their ages. And uh, I'm right there with he, Dr. H is just a few years older than me, <laughs> but I'm in that same genre with him. And we, we can remember things that were different back then, you know, all the, from vaccinations to what happened when you got a cut or a scrape, you know, these are things that have changed dramatically in our lifestyles. Uh, the food has changed dramatically in our lifestyle. Um, the amount of medications, I mean, it's just that they're given out like candy today. So we have these issues. All right, enough of that. Now we've made the case, like we always do. Now what are we going to do about it? All right, well, let's see what this, this two-step process is. Now, I don't think, you know, the next slide talks about properly prescribed medications. I think we've kind of covered that. Dr. H., covered that earlier this uh this week you know they they are violating their hippocratic oath i'm just gonna you know call spade a spade here they are violating their hippocratic oath first do no harm because every one of these drugs has adverse effects the very term adverse effects means it's doing harm to the body you know we've seen the numbers third leading cause of death. Some people, you know, four, it started out fourth leading cause of death in, the, death in this country, properly prescribed medications. Now they're saying third, but I've heard some professionals, Candace, say that it's the number one cause of death in this country because when they do these stats, they're only doing them on a single drug, not on compounded medications that they don't have any history in or any way of seeing which one caused the, the, the ultimate adverse effect, which is death. So we know that's part of the problem. I wanna skip ahead. Let's go to step one. There we go. Now I said earlier, I was going to toot their horn a little bit and they don't do this enough. So I'm gonna do it for them. You've got to make chiropractic care part of your lifestyle. You know, we've all been guilty of it you know i get an injury i go see dr o he fixed me up but you know i do go to see him without injuries too and in fact the last time i went to see him a week or two ago uh he goes what's the problem i said nothing i just need i just need tuned up here he goes okay but it's got to be a part of our lifestyle it's not just for pain it's for life it's it was created for life and that's got to be step one now, here's why. Go to the next slide. We talk about the body's innate intelligence, right? Some people call that vitalism, okay? That term disease, dis-ease, is when the body's natural ability to heal has been interrupted. That could be 
through physical causes. That could be through chemical causes. That could be through electromagnetic field causes. That could be through frequency. Oh, did you, did you see the presentation on Rife? Did you get a chance to catch that? Make sure you, you check that one out. Uh, that was yesterday too, I believe. Amazing about the, freq the, the ability of frequency in our, uh, to heal or to help the body heal. Because <clears throat> that frequency in the body, every organ, every system, every part, every, uh, all has a frequency. It gets disrupted. You have this ease. Now, where chiropractic comes in, this term, the whole, I mean, you could probably sum up chiropractic in this one word, subluxation. This is when there's a dysfunction in the vertebrae. This is when that, sub, that, that signaling that our body does gets interrupted, usually through the central nervous system. So our ability to self-heal, self-regulate, okay, adapt, repair, all gets interrupted Okay, if you take, if you take a, um, let's just say a real, real simple example. If you have a hose and you're, and you're spraying your garden and somebody ties a knot in it, the water stops. Well, when you have a subluxation in your body, there's a barrier that's been put up and the signals can't get through. So for your body to be able to heal properly, for your body to be able to do what it needs to do, you have to have a clear path through the central nervous system. That's what chiropractic will do for you. Vitalism. Vitalism is the key. Healing only occurs when your body has the ability to do it and a clear pathway to do it. That pathway is so often interrupted. Candace, how many times have you seen people with poor posture and lately with tech neck, right? head down looking at their phone do you think they might have some subluxation subluxation somewhere i mean people hunched over you know just our posture is terrible today why because we're all sitting too much and there's all kinds of other causes bad sleeping bad pillows you name it injuries just bad habits but that pathway has to be cleared folks or healing cannot happen now, uh, the next slide, just a little quote here uh, from the father of chiropractic, B.J. Palmer. I love this. Medicine is the study of disease and what causes man to die. Chiropractic is the study of health and what causes man to live. I think that's profound and it just hits home you know let's 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 think about medicine for a second modern medicine it's not traditional medicine okay and i and, and charlene said this the other day traditional medicine is is the naturopathy traditional medicine is nutrition is uh acupuncture and chiropractic these are traditional medicines modern Medicine is not traditional, so don't confuse that. It's only been around, you know, well, what did they say, uh, around 1918, around 1915, when the chemical industry took over and became the pharmaceutical industry. It's all there, folks. It's all in the history, but they're not going to teach you that. You have to look for it, but it is there. So chiropractic is the study of health. What causes you to live because it keeps that pathway open so the body can heal naturally. So we know the chiropractic works on the central nervous system primarily, but you know, so you have Dr. A, uh, Dr. Orbach, who's an expert at working on your limbs. That's still part of the nervous system, right? You have nerves all through your limbs, but he works on your limbs as much as he works on your back and neck. Now, I've never personally been to Dr. Honigman as a patient for chiropractic. I've, got, I've been going to Dr. Orbach, so I'm not sure what his style is. But the beauty of this at the Weiner Wellness Center is that you have options. I mean, you have two different chiropractors there, and you can choose which one fits you the best. So now that we know that chiropractic directly affects 
the central nervous system, which directly affects the pathway for signaling in your body, which directly affects your body's ability to heal. What's step two? Come on, Candace. I know you know what it is. <laughs> step two is the 91st essential nutrient. <laughs> there it is, cannabinoids. Okay, now you're gonna now people are gonna look at this thing and say, come on, Joe, there's all kinds of nutrients out there. You guys have been talking about all of them. Yes, we have. We've talked about vitamin D3, we've talked about CoQ10, we've talked about DMG. The one that Mikey Gallagher says is the miracle nutrient. Well, yeah, they're all great nutrients. We are deficient in so many of them and we have to replenish them. But the reason I signal out cannabinoids here as being step two in this process is because it directly relates to a system in the body just like chiropractic does. So there's the, there's the connection chiropractic directly affects the central nervous system and cannabinoids directly affect the endocannabinoid system in the body. This is a system that every single one of us has. About 99.9% .9 of the animals on this planet have an endocannabinoid system they're finding more and more and more and more all the time. But this system, the endocannabinoid system, it's been neglected. You know, we've talked about CBD, we've shown our checklist and we're gonna show it again, maybe at the end of the presentation. But the point is, there is a system in your body. Every single person listening and watching this, you, every member of your family, has a system called the endocannabinoid system that has been starved of its key nutrient for generations. That's why we started calling it the 91st essential nutrient, along with the 60 minerals, 16 vitamins, 12 amino acids, and two essential fatty acids. This is the 91st essential nutrient because your system your endocannabinoid system does not function without it. And if you don't think that's important, let's go to the slide with the, uh, the man on it, Candace, that shows the reach and the touch. There we go. This is what the endocannabinoid system interacts with, touches, and has the, the homeostasis of the body bringing the body up to natural function, optimal function. And folks, I gotta tell you, a lot of us are way below zero on that. Homeostasis, that's gotta be the first goal before you can get above that to optimal health. But the endocannabinoid system has receptor sites all throughout the body, in the nervous system, in the digestive system, the musculoskeletal system, endocrine system, how much did we talk about hormones all week? The immune system, do you think that's important right now? Circulatory system, heart disease, still kills one in four people in this country. So there is practically no part of the body that's not touched by the endocannabinoid system. That shows you the importance of it. And unfortunately, it was only really discovered about 30, 35 years ago. Now, Dr. David Allen, you can move to the next slide. Uh, one of the foremost um, uh, experts and physicians on the endocannabinoid system, there is actually a, uh, an organization out there, Candace, called the International Cannabinoid Research Scientist Group. Now it's about time. But they're, they're looking into this all the time for every single modality that we're faced with. But what they found is the endocannabinoid system reacts a lot like our hormone system in our body. See, our hormone system is a 
chemical communication system. Something tells something else to do this, which tells something else to do that, which produces something else. It's a chemical communication system. So is the endocannabinoid system. That's why it's so effective with all these other systems in our body. Now we do make small, small amounts of cannabinoids naturally, and they can be available in other plant-based uh, nutrients and foods, but just not anywhere near enough for that therapeutic level that we need right now. Because when everything was outlawed, everything cannabis, everything hemp was gone in 1937, well, I, there's three generations, I would say, that have been deprived, maybe more at this point. Over 70 years, over 70 years, we have been deprived of this nutrient. And is it a coincidence, Candace, that health has steadily declined over the last 70 years? You know, we had, we didn't have one in two or one in three people get cancer 40, 50 years ago. No, we didn't have one in four deaths in this country from heart disease 50, 60 years ago. Uh -uh. Everything has escalated. Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, neurological disorders of all kinds. Our, the health of our children has escalated. I mean, the declining health of our children. Everybody now is deficient, everybody in this amazing nutrient, cannabinoids. We need it to get back to homeostasis. Without it, it's just going to be an uphill battle and one will probably never win. This could be the missing link. This could be the absolute missing link. Now, do you need cannabis? No, medicinal hemp provides all the cannabinoids we could possibly need. Let's go to the next slide. Medicinal hemp, the kind that's available at the Weiner Wellness Center and from Nutritional Frontiers, that provides all the cannabinoids and all the other cofactors that make up what's called the entourage effect, the full plant extract. Medicinal hemp provides it all. No one, no one needs a medical cannabis. And in fact, I've heard some people say, some experts in our industry, in fact, Judy Mikevitz said, it. she said cannabinoids could be the key to our immune system because they start a chemical process that helps your body produce interferon, our natural cancer fighter. And we asked her point blank, does that have to be the medical cannabis? She said, absolutely not. Medicinal hemp provides all the cannabinoids you need. In fact, she said the medicinal hemp is sometimes filled with too many chemicals that can become toxic. That's not the case with medicinal hemp. And that's not the case with a full spectrum hemp oil, like the organic versions that we have. You don't need medicinal hemp. Now, some scientists that have been studying this for years now, that CB modulates the electrical and chemical activity in the brain. That's where we can have a positive effect on seizures. Now, electrical and chemical activity in the brain. We talked about the nervous system. That's electrical activity. That's sending signals, right? Chemical activity. We talk about hormones, about the body's ability to use nutrients. But if they don't get used properly after they're ingested, if they're not assimilated after they're ingested, they believe that CBD can modify those processes. That's just amazing to me after 20 some years in this industry for a nutrient to come now that's just a head and shoulders above everything else out there. And another thing, they were using, some were using THC, some were using CBD, some were using combinations for seizures. Well, they have found, here's Dr. Julie Holland, it's a quote from her. They found that it's the CBD, not the THC that actually stops seizures. 
So that's, that's just amazing for people that, that can't get medical marijuana or maybe don't want to get it. There's an option, medicinal hemp, full spectrum hemp oil. Now, next slide, please. There's a word. Most people in our people in our industry, Candace, don't even know that word terpenes. Unless they're into essential oils. I heard, you know, Dr. H talking about that too. Jeez, he's just like an encyclopedia, that guy. But he's, you know, terpenes are the part of the plant, the medicinal hemp, hemp plant that provide the aroma and the oil. So essential oils are terpenes. Essential oils are amazing. I love them. I just started learning about them in the last year or so. And I love them. I know you do too, Kansas. And it's just that these are things that within cannabinoids, within a medicinal hemp, full spectrum, hemp oil, cannabinoid rich product, you get terpenes. You get them. They're there. That's why you need the whole plant extract. You need the entourage effect. And, and if anybody's unsure of what a terpene is, if, if you have citrus fruit, it's very simple. Start peeling that citrus fruit. You know, and that, that oily feel from the peel and that aroma that you get immediately, that's the terpene. And one of the most common, one of the most popular ones in the nutritional industry is lemonine. And that's an essential oil that comes from lemons. Okay, full plant extract, entourage effect. You need the terpenes. And the next slide gives you an idea of how many terpenes are involved. I mean, it's just mind blowing. It's a rainbow, okay? It's an actual rainbow of terpenes. There are some that are more prominent than others. There are some that are more studied than others. It doesn't matter. As long as it's a full spectrum extract, you get the entourage effect, all the terpenes. I mean, there's so many of them, we could never cover them. So Kansas, I heard you tell Dr. H that I was gonna bring some breaking news to the table. Okay, I have some breaking news. Um, it's not that new. I did talk about this once before, but we still haven't heard about this anywhere in a mainstream media. We haven't heard about it anywhere in the uh, modern medicine community, but it's there, it's out there. The research is all there. And the only place you're gonna get it is right here. Let's go to the, the next slide. Actually, let's go to uh, this information. Yes, yeah, go to the next one. This one um, I brought to the table a year ago. And at the, one of the Winer Wellness Weeks, I brought this to everybody. We have this study. Candace and I have talked about it on the radio. We have this available. You can get it from Nutritional Frontiers. You can get this study from the Winer Wellness Center. If you ask, if you call, if you email and ask for it, we can send it to you. But this actual study, act, this happened two years ago. You know, I remember talking about it last year at the Fall Fiesta, okay, when we were live down at the Weiner Wellness Center. And I remember telling everybody, this is a year old, this information. Why haven't you heard about it? If it's a year old, Nobody had an answer. There is no answer. It's suppressed. That's the answer. But this study, now two years old, and here we are in October, a study in, by the National Institutes of Health. They were molecular biologists at the California Pacific Medical Center, and they were doing tests on breast cancer and on how possibly CBD could slow down and even halt the progression of breast cancer. Halt it, stop it, prevent it from mass metastasizing. So does anybody think that's important? I mean, we talked earlier about cancers in this country, the most prominent ones, breast, prostate. If it can do what they showed, it can do at this study. Why wouldn't we be able to extrapolate that out to other types of cancer? I'm just asking the question, why wouldn't we be able to? Maybe we need to look into it. But what did this study find? 
here's what it found. It found that there is, well, they knew that there was a protein and it's called the ID1 protein. I, this protein is what causes the breast cancer cells from progressing into metastasis. So what they found, and they had a hypothesis and they went and proved it. I mean, that's what science is supposed to do. But they showed in this study using human breast cancer cells, human breast cancer cells, okay, not animal ones, Candace, human breast cancer cells. They showed that CBD was capable of downregulating the ID1 protein. And if, of course, they extrapolate out from this, okay, if you can downregulate the protein that causes metastasis, possibly you could prevent metastasis from breast cancer from happening with CBD. I think that's mind blowing. I mean, the effect is, is just universal. Unfortunately, we haven't heard anybody from Susan G. Komen talk about this. No, but we got ribbons out there. You know, we have pink ribbons and pink shoes. And, uh, oh my God, I'm sure we have pink face masks by now. You know, I'm, I'm all for capitalism, but you know, people <laughs> don't capitalize on fear. I'm sorry. And that's what's being done out there with these designer face masks. It's just terrible. Sorry. Okay. So how about some more breaking news, Candace? Have you heard that CBD has been found to be as effective as some frontline antibiotics? Wow. Wow. It has. They found this out at the University of Queensland. Okay. They found that it was even more effective against super resistant bugs because it's not an antibiotic. So it's not going to be, it's not going to be resistant. So what they did was they tested a synthetic form of cannabidiol on some skin to this conditions. And it was even successful in treating some staph conditions. Now, you know how horrible staph infections can be, right? CBD was effective in treating serious staph infections. Not resistant. And we know that cannabidiol is also an anti-inflammatory. Now we know it works on pain in the body. We know it does that from two different aspects. We know it does that from the central nervous system. So the signaling of the pain, okay, it works from that aspect, but it also has a dual action and that is as an anti-inflammatory. So they did some research on this as well. And again, working as an anti-inflammatory, having an effect on the body, without being resistant. Just amazing stuff. It goes on. You know, and I, I, I have a slide that asks a rhetorical question. I mean, it was, maybe it's not rhetorical, but it says maybe we should stop asking what it, you know, don't ask what it helps. Start asking what it doesn't help because it helps everything. Homeostasis in the body. There are almost 13,000 peer reviewed studies. 13,000, and we just started this in the last 10 years, maybe less. Some of the studies fights brain cell inflammation. How about that? This was at the Salk Institute. They found that hemp targets the neuroinflammatory activity and can actually remove toxic proteins. Now that goes right back to how it helped, how it it fits in with the ID1 protein. That's a toxic protein in the body. But it helps with brain inflammation in that way as well. We already know about pain. We already know about joint health. We know that we can affect it both topically and internally. We know we have you know, uh, delivery methods that are oil, delivery methods that are soft gels, that are transdermal creams. If you have something, if you have a very localized pain, the cream is amazing because it gets through the skin and into the blood. 
You can use them together. You can use them simultaneously. But the list goes on and on. We know that it helps with mood, right? Pain, brain, connection all the time, mood, sleep. The studies are all out there, Candace, and um, I, I know we're running out of time already, but the studies are out there that show that better sleep, less anxiety, pain relief, all of these things. Let's get back to homeostasis in the body. How do we do it? We do it two ways. Relieve the blockages. Use chiropractic to keep the signals moving through the central nervous system and then add to that a regimen, regimen of cannabinoid supplementation so that you can aid with those signals in the endocannabinoid system that touches every major system in your body. That's a two-step process I think could work for anybody. I think so too, Joe. And, you know, whenever we talk about CBD, I mean, from our position, we try to um, go about it in a legally professional way. And we say that helps with brain pain, um, <clears throat> keep it limited. But whenever you're talking, it's like, what doesn't it help? It can seriously help with everything. And when, when people hear that, they might think, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah might have a hard time understanding that, but that picture that you showed, the illustration of, you know, just the atomical body with the different systems, you know, digestion, that's why it's working better than antibiotics because it helps with digestion. Um, you know, the immune system, maybe that has something to do with uh, the cancers that you address, the studies. And, you know, there's science to back all of this, but that image of all of the different systems and the information of, all of the receptor sites throughout our entire body, that's what explains it all. And that's how it all makes sense to us. But um, you're right, we have been deprived of this for over 70 years and now we're starting to bring it back and we're seeing testimonials of, you know, children with behavioral disorders um, seemingly better and digestion and cancers and all of this great information, all of these great testimonials uh, because this is so powerful. It's powerful. Combine it with chiropractic and there you have it. So everybody get your appointments with the Weiner Wellness Center. Go see Dr. O, go see Dr. H, talk to Jeff. Jeff will tell you which one of the delivery methods might be best for you. Yeah. So you got the, the total package as always. Yeah. And as always, this was breaking news and that, that study may be two years old, but it's not front page news. It hasn't no. been. And unfortunately, I don't know if it ever will be. So that's why you need to keep talking about it. You need to keep sharing it with the team. Uh, we have the links. The clinic has the links. So if anyone uh, wants to read more about that, it's available. But um, we are out of time. So this is awesome, Joe. Thanks for sharing this breaking news with us today. And uh, we'll see you again soon. See you soon. Live long and prosper.